Have you guys ever heard that Swamps of Dagobah story on, yes. on Reddit? No. Harrowing stuff. Yeah, I know. Here what we are. Swamps of Dagobah. I'm not talking about it. Oh, okay. If you wanna if you wanna find it out, go read it. It is uh an endeavor. It's rough. A woman's got a bunch of shit in her, and it's coming out. And it's not shit. It's something else. Is her name Dagobah? No. Uh they call it Swamps of Dagobah because it was steamy. Okay. And hot. Mm. And it just, wasn't shit. See, that's interesting. I watched that movie and I never thought of Dagobah as being particularly hot. I immediately just because it's a swamp. I, would, I, I, swamp, I, I, I thought, thought it was muggy. a human. I thought it was a cold swamp. I, yeah, cold, swamps can be cold. Yeah, like, Name it, one. It, there's a bunch cold of Cold and humid is still a thing. And it sucks. I don't know. I, Ohio. Prefer, I prefer cold and humid. That just like, means you feel like... I like my women like I like my swamps. Go ahead. Not human. Not cold. Dead thing. You, Not you cold. like your women humid? Yes. <laughs> you just damp? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way I like my women. Mm. You gotta roll around and find the wet spot. Do they come out in any other way? You gotta roll them around in <laughs> sand. <laughs> clever segue to what I've been doing tonight. <laughs> I was was looking, that clever? I think so. Are we starting this podcast <laughs> so, without a welcome, tell everybody? Me, tell we me about your professional sandcastle competition. So, I was a little late getting to the recording today because I promised a friend of mine that I would participate in a sand volleyball tournament today. Rookie mistake. And it cost me 25 Are you bucks. in to volleyball? No. Shut the fuck up, then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be honest, I don't want to read too much into this, but I might be into sand volleyball. <laughs> You seem like a sand volleyball kind of guy. <laughs> I am a competitor at heart. I've got I've got a champion's soul, a champion's heart, and you know, I'm just a team member through and through. <laughs> if that wasn't obvious to you I all. <laughs> believe everything but that last part. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I'm gl- I like it when people tell me what they are, especially when it's virtuous things. <laughs> yep, yep. So I'm a racist. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good. Virtue signaling over here. We were playing. We were playing in the six on six league, and it was me and a couple of my climbing friends who were just doing a favor. And we thought, you know, we we hit the ball around for a couple of hours. No, this was an all day tournament. We did a round robin to begin, and then the results of that round robin gave us our seeds for the actual tournament. So the tournament didn't even begin until like seven o'clock and we had already been there since three playing volleyball. This is too much volleyball. Yeah. yeah. Did you catch any balls in the face? I didn't, but typically you, you catch them you with your hands. sand on any balls? I, you know, I, <laughs> my underwear is a little <laughs> granular <laughs> right now. You hitting the gritty of the bad way? Because <laughs> I, I'm a champion. I've got champion's heart, and I'm a team player. So he dove. I dove so many times. <laughs> I do not recommend it because sand, contrary to what you may think of in your head, is not soft. It's coarse and rough. It, it's and it gets in your gooch. <laughs> <laughs> I eat everywhere. Um, no, it's it moves. But it is a bunch of little rocks. Yeah. And so if you take a dive, you just took a dive into gravel, basically. <laughs> and it hurts. Slightly more forgiving gravel, but not by much. It'll knock the wind out of you. Uh-huh. And I love going for the dive. Going now, for the play, make correct the highlight reel. I, mm-hmm. I get it. Uh, a humble person, such as myself. Mm. Um, All of my beach volleyball experience comes from the film the Top game? Gun. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Um, that was football. That's the second up, one. Huh? Oh. Uh, I haven't watched any of them. Uh, I, oh, you weren't at a beach? No. We quite, were in a, we were in a commercial warehouse that had been converted just, into sand and volleyball. There was a bunch of course. sand around. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. That might be why it hurts so much when you dive Yeah, because you're just hitting the ground mm-hmm. with sand on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, the, the, if you're at the beach, there's more sand underneath that sand. Yeah. <laughs> this is rough. Um, did you win? So, Lost that crown. wasn't a yes. I, I'm answering the question. <laughs> we 
we're writing what is known in the business as an underdog story. <laughs> so for the round robin, we played four teams. Okay. And we almost won four times. Nice. Actually, that's a bit of a lie. Uh, we got utterly decimated three times and got double digit points on one of the games. But it was close at the beginning of all those games. Yes. Yes. We were tied up for at some point in all of those games, actually. So going into the tournament, we're seated last. Hell yeah. <laughs> Just like the Orocs. Yeah. And so we're, <laughs> we're, we're playing the third seed because first and second got buys. And we were really hitting our group. How many teams were there? I think in our league, there was about maybe nine. Okay. And we were in the beer league, by the way. Hell yeah. So y'all were tanked. <laughs> this is this is the league, quote, the league it's for like, when you're doing a favor for your friends who are organizing is, the event. This is adult softball. That's why his eyes don't keep focusing, and that's why he stopped so long to, uh, to he wasn't going to gas, John. <laughs> he, wasn't, he had to fucking refuel, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he had to get a chase. He had to fucking shotgun a couple million lights. We really hit our stride as a team on that last game. We were, and like I said, I don't want to read too much into it, but this was the first time all of our team members played sand volleyball. Okay. And after five games, I, I see some potential here. <laughs> I might be picking up a new hobby. You already have so many. We we lost by 13 points, <laughs> 25 to 12. But those 12 points were very well earned. And this is like a I don't know how football it's not like it's not like it, football right where you get what, multiple what points every time you score. No, no. So somebody scored twenty five times and on you. Yes. Don't you Rough. don't you only score when you serve, or is that not the case? Not in this league. Okay. It was it was I, I, rally scoring. I guess no, I don't know no. whoever whoever won the bout gets the point okay. regardless of server. Uh. Would you now consider doing mud volleyball in the summer? Absolutely, yes. I actually, <laughs> dude, when I was a teenager, I played mud volleyball. Did you? Now? I did. I cut the fuck out of my foot on a rock that was in the mud. <laughs> it was awful. I've they done should that check that. They should. They check should. It. How do you? <laughs> you said hey, you get you get Johns out yeah. there to yeah. cut their feet up. I guess. <laughs> I dive, and then I'm like. I'm like, there was a rock somewhere where my feet were when I dove, and there was a rock where I landed, too. <laughs> <laughs> Just here is bad luck. Or maybe you're really good at finding rocks. Don't worry, though. The rock where I landed, it's not in there anymore. Pulls it out of my chest. <laughs> Don't worry. The rock where I landed hit me in the head. I'm okay. Concussion it number was, 17. It was just the head. What are we talking about today? So, uh, I've been away for a bit. Uh, Kyle, they holy to, yeah. fuck, Kyle, you're here? Yeah. Uh, I thought that was just an oddly shaped lamp. I <laughs> I get that a I, lot. I, I, didn't realize, I didn't realize because Chris didn't say who all was here this time. No. Oh. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, to win the buff. But I've been away for a bit, and we've also been on sabbatical for the one of the other D&D games we've been running, and I've been trying to figure out how to put all that back together to get us back started at the beginning of April, or sometime in April, and so one of the things I went through and did was I looked at uh, my, and tried to analyze my strengths and weaknesses as a DM for my kind of style, the games I tend to run, how do I cater that to my party, um, and a bunch of other things, and then it's like, all of you guys are also DMs and or players. You've all played a lot of different games. You've all played a lot of different games with each other. So I figured it'd be fun to do some more DM talk because I love our DM talks and even just listening to them. Uh, so one of the things I wanted to go over was like, what do you guys all think about your different DMing styles? What do you think your strengths and weaknesses are? What are some things that you would like to give as tips or you would like to ask the group? To say, hey, I have problems with this. Do you guys have any ideas that I could work on? Well, I'm a competitor at heart. And I'm the best DM we got. Bar none. Ask anybody in this room. Probably. 
Uh, that being said, I would love you guys' feedback uh, so that I can always continue to improve and stay top dog. You know what I'm saying? Dab me up, Cody. Thanks. That was really good. That's a good dab. That was good. <laughs> um, <laughs> we we I think we talked about this in the in the in the podcast before. There's this culture between John and Cody that's just kind of been. I think it might be my fault a little bit. <laughs> it's Cold War escalation. No, no, no. Hold on. Before yes. before you blame anybody, this dynamic has been between me and Cody for a long time. And uh, we talk about Halo Reach all the time. Uh, then we have that little competition. And then, like, it turns sour. But even, even before that, like, when we were kids and, like, uh, there were times where Cody and I were like, dude, let's, let's all just, like, play a little basketball at Andy's house. And it was always Cody and I on opposite teams. Like... <laughs> I, I never feel like noticed this. There, I feel like there was actually a competitive nature between us from the rip, pretty much. Was? Yeah. It started with Buffalo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Buffalo's great, though. Buffalo's great. That's have we told fault. that story? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We have. Okay. Um, that's your fault. Sure. <laughs> I blame you. Honestly, I... He didn't want to get it on me. If you could just... Sub oh, that. If you could just submit to my champion's heart, <laughs> we wouldn't have these types of rivalries. I have yeah. to agree with Cody. Well, mm. how about you just solidify yourself as number one and then we'll talk. Mm. Well, we were the number one team <laughs> at volleyball today. You lost 25. I thought you lost a lot. lot. Well, no. I, on the list, we were at the top of the <laughs> list. We were the number. We were the first name on their, the list. Their last name. <laughs> right. well, the captain's last name started with an A. Two A's, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Our team name was Unprotected Sets. <laughs> nice. My uh, my number in school was very often thirteen because M is the thirteenth letter. Oh, Isn't that great! Last name starts with M. Hmm. Isn't that fun? Mm. Cool. I think you're the only one here who hasn't been completely doxed. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, maybe Chris. Chris Vol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. <laughs> DM styles, <laughs> strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. See, here's the thing, right? I have a competitive spirit. Announcing the thing. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we tripled down. That was, a dab. that was a dab right there. Oh, my God. Uh, it's just I uh, don't carry that very long. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am the worst. Dude. At uh, dropping games um, all the time. Uh, so how do you guys get your games to last so long? Honestly, Chris, this is... Sorry, An I don't want to come off as attacking you, but this has been <laughs> like a macro. frustration of mine. That's your macro. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this has been a frustration of mine for like the longest time is you start off so intensely passionate about whatever project you're about to do. And then it just immediately hits a cliff. Yeah. Mm. Like, the different games that you've wanted to run, you have an idea that you're motivated for, and then two weeks later, I see the passion completely go away. And it's not even just specifically games. Like, there was a time where you're like, oh, I want to make a video game. And you started teaching yourself how, and, like, you got super excited that you were able to get to a point where you created a jump function. I'm like, oh, my God, this is awesome. He's like, he's doing things. Like, I would have never gotten that far. This is interesting. And then never heard another thing about it since. Like, you reach that point, and I think you reach a point where, like, you like something, you become satisfied with that aspect of it, and then the passion just goes away. Stop making, you're making them cry. I have a question. Um, how are you doing with the CrossFit? Is he still doing the CrossFit? It's been two weeks. CrossFit is sticking um, in the <laughs> Nice. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have that champion's heart over there. Uh, Can't do it. I wilt before your pressure. Kyle, that, that's a great question, Kyle. Um, uh, any other questions? He's bulking. Uh, He's bulking right now. No, uh, you should be harvesting some of that mass because you're done cultivating. You're done cultivating. Uh, because of the holiday season, mm -hmm. uh, it gets very uh, busy. So I wasn't finding time to go to the CrossFit gym okay. uh, during those months. Um, so I decided to take a few months off um, to, like, you know, save up some money and, and trying to get back into a pattern with everything else. And then I could fit that back in. Um, so my plan was to start back March 1st. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it's March 23rd. It is March 23rd. And Prime number. We haven't gone back to CrossFit. Okay. Uh, yet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm, hey, only... I'm starting to see a pattern that John was talking about. Shut up, Kyle. I'm the only one in this this uh, round table. More of a square. Uh, There's corners. I'd say it's like a star. John, you need to just get a pentagon as a, as a table. John, why have you done that? <laughs> I'll check Amazon after we finish recording. <laughs> okay. uh, I would love to have one of those gaming tables, like the nice wooden Ooh, ones that Kurt yeah. Yeah. has. I'm... The the one that has like I'd come all over it. I saw I, one I that had a built in like a screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep seeing one for a built in screen, and then there's like a the edge has like little like panel where table. you can hold your dice and stuff, mm. like pool table guards yeah. as well. Yep. And I'm like, it has cup holders. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man, where would I put this? Thing? <laughs> <laughs> Do I just remove my kitchen table? Yeah. Do yes. I just get rid of that and that becomes the kitchen table? You never yes. eat in there. That's true. Um, it's where my mail goes. <laughs> <laughs> you hardly ever cook in there. Regardless. Um, I warm things up all the time. <laughs> uh, I'm the only one who hasn't had the displeasure of being a DM here in this <laughs> round table. At uh, first impression, I say first impression, my impression of all of you is like, for, for me specifically you, Chris, because everybody's dogging on you. And I'm not here to dog on you. Okay? We got that. Dog on you. Um, you, I think, are better at everyone else when it comes to working with your player as at the beginning, because I don't think I've ever felt more ingratiated into a world than in the worlds that we've made together. Uh, could you not interrupt me? I'm could you, trying. Could you, run, could you run that line again? Uh, no, I don't remember okay. what I said. Uh, <laughs> I just feel very like when we make a char- when I make a character in your world, you it's like two people coming together, right? And Scissoring. my vision and your vision come together and it melds into making my part of the world that my character is from, that kind of thing. Did a great job of that. I feel like Cody, we could have done that a really good too. I just didn't give that much effort. I'm like, mm-hmm. I just want to be a rich guy. I want to be like a rich, like from a rich snobby family. And my dad just really expects a lot from me. Yeah. And like, honestly, based on... Just thinking about how I like to run my game, I don't know if I would have given you that kind of treatment. I was thinking about this as we were recording here, and I run my game in such a way, and I think, Scott, you've brought this up, where the importance of the party is minimal to the overall world like the world and the events i don't even really try to think of it as like there being stories and characters in my game the world is the world and the events that are happening are going to happen and it's your guys's job as players to figure out how your characters fit into the world and I also, like, uh, I don't know if this was just me rationalizing it, but it's also just because we're noob adventurers. We just started. Why would we be important? Mm-hmm. Right. We are just people working in this world that has its own machinations. Um, I would say, Chris, uh, why don't uh, the, the advice I would think to give you in this thing is similar to what we were saying when we kind of talked about this before we got it to recording, which is lean into your strengths. Hell yeah. Um, it might be that you just aren't cut out for running long-term campaigns. Oh. Instead, focus on running one shots or maybe three shots. Like if you can if you can keep your investment for three sessions, I think you could really turn that into something. Like you I've only ever run a game or been in a game with you when we was essentially just a two shot. Um, and it was a lot of fun. It's one of the only games of 5e I've ever played, and it was a blast. It was a fun, gamified, kind of Nazi zombies kind of a game. Can't say either of those words. And <laughs> <laughs> it was... Nazi or game. <laughs> it, it really was a lot of fun. And I appreciated how tight it was as a two, like a one-shot. Sure, it spilled over into two, but that was just because there was enough game there for us to keep going. 
So I would say that does appear to be a strength for you. Lean into that. Don't necessarily try and push yourself to these long form games that you lose investment in. You, if you can keep your investment for something small, make something small, do it really well, and then move on to another one. I really do agree with this. My, slight, very slight pushback, not really even that, not really a pushback, it's just about abandoning that long-form format. Um, we've talked about this before. The character that I'm talking about in regard to us working so well together was Oliver. Mm -hmm. Oliver is the most fully realized character I've ever had. I know exactly who Oliver is. He lives in my head, right? I know the decisions he would make and the things he would say. Uh, and it's because we worked so well together, creating his part of the world and, and like where he would come from and just the person he is, and that type of shit. Um, so like a one shot, I feel like I wouldn't get that. Uh, Those are okay. two really disparate yeah. strengths. You and know, that's, um, that's hard to get a good fusion in there. You know why that is my strength? Uh, what I said? Yep. <laughs> the uh, uh, collaborative effort. Sure. Um, it's because, <clears throat> so as a writer, and when I was going to college for creative writing, th there was nothing that I wanted more. This kind of shuts up again. <laughs> <laughs> than to have Did a... Did you went to college for writing? I didn't know that, actually. I hadn't heard it. Uh... I did. Oh. I did know he went to college for writing because he talks about it all the time. <laughs> uh, there's nothing more uh, that I ever wanted out of that experience than to just have a, a group of like five, ten people and we would go to a bar and order drinks and just talk about uh, and bounce all ideas off of each other on what we were working on. You wanted your inklings. I want, yeah. I wanted, I wanted a writing group. I have an idea. And so, um, like, um, so my partner, right? Um, Grix, actually. <laughs> my Grix. That's a D&D &D monster. Uh, Is it? Yeah, uh, I found out they uh, the other dark. They're shit! Weird, they're we, weird worm things. Uh, they used to go to Wright State for film. And um, we ran into, um, we went to this little arts theater downtown called The Neon. Mm -hmm. And we ran into um, and a, a friend of theirs that is still in the film program. In fact, they were working on a film at the time. And they described to me their film that they were working on. And I was immediately like, uh, because they were getting pushback on the type of film they were making. And so immediately I was just like, okay, I have the premise and uh, I understand how people could uh, find problems with it. So I just was like, here's some ideas. Just immediately. Because I want that so badly. Um, that's why I think I'm so good at creating a collaborative effort. Because you want somebody to work with you on a collaborative effort? I just... You want somebody's vision to be as refined as it can be. Yeah. Okay. Um, then another another piece of advice I can think of is if you want to do that for a tabletop game, I would lean more towards games that focus on narrative storytelling elements than something like D&D. &D. There are a lot of systems out there that are really, really good for collaborative storytelling more so than D, D. there's a lot less dice there's a lot less um uh, i'm not gonna say there's less mechanics there are though. there are a lot there can be but the mechanics are focused around the players interactions with the story rather than what the players do for uh for example you basically like hey i'm gonna spend a point to alter something in the past for the present so that mm. we can overcome this obstacle so it's you're basically doing an ocean's 11 like we thought just about to say we thought right. of this have you heard of blades in the dark fuck blades dude. in the dark uses this exact mechanic right what that's the kind of thing i would maybe say. that's why i have this thought maybe i knew about it and i just didn't realize i knew it from somewhere because that was actually a mechanic i was considering in my game right yeah. and so i would say 
look towards games that do that kind of a thing better and see if you can find something that'll keep your interest. Mm. That way you are always working on that continuous level of back and forth with your players because you're all of you are telling a story rather than you as a DM are trying to make the story work with the players. I'm not, I've never been a huge fan of those kinds of systems. I've never played any. But I've watched several uh, play those of those being played, and I guess my my biggest problem with those kinds of systems are like there's hardly any game to me. We're mm. like one step away from just being four dudes talking about the story. Yeah, yeah. That is one of the drawbacks of those kind of games. I like I'm already sitting on a tenuous thread with Phi <laughs> D even uh, because. There are, don't get me wrong, there are very firm rules and everything. Like, I have numbers on a sheet that tell me what my character is and, and what he does and all that kind of shit. Um, but it's a far... Yeah, I love... Okay, I really love tabletop games. That's a far cry from, like, playing Far Cry. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or some other video game. Where, you know, it's kind of like you were saying, oh, who gives a fuck if I mention it? That very good uh, excerpt you came up with for the House of Leaves thing, where oh, yeah, yeah. there's very little room for interpretation when it comes to a video game. Yeah. Uh, but it's all interpretation when it comes to D&D. &D. Yeah, yeah. It, it's almost like the mechanics are there to constrain the player's actions. Absolutely. Because if there are no mechanics, and we're just five guys talking about a story, we're just what, stops me, what stops me from just saying, my character wins? <laughs> That's how Paul Bunyan is created. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how you get, uh, what is it, Ham Hawk skates, and he's just skating along a giant mile-long griddle making pancakes. Mm -hmm. Or Captain Storm along. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on, I think we're <laughs> investigating my corner now. I feel attacked. Trust okay. me, we attacked you plenty in that episode. <laughs> Watch it here. In all of them, actually. I love that you pointed... <laughs> yeah. uh, I was thinking about what my strength is as a DM, and I don't know if it's necessarily a strength, but it's something that I invest most of my effort into, and that is the sound of my game is very important to me. We can do... The visuals can only get us so far because we're just sitting around a table and maybe there's a battle map, maybe there's some minis, and that's an abstract view of what's going on in the story, but I think the sound you guys hear can do the most to immerse you in the story. And not only that, that's just actually, now that I think about it, that's just huh. a bonus. Uh, the stuff I do with sound in my game is for me. <laughs> I, you, well, here's I because would, I would definitely agree it's a strength of his because I sat in on just a few games and the sheer soundscape that you put out for everything I got to see mm -hmm. totally made me go. I want to put as much sound into my game as possible. It's and I tried to do that immediately. It's things like you it's know, your T-Rex noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's music, it's ambiance, it's sound effects, it's character voices. All that stuff, I just like doing that. You know, the I have two very clear examples in my head. Is one when we were in the Astral Sea and you guys were fighting at Zemo's. The jukebox. The jukebox. The jukebox. Mm -hmm. and that's going to be a memory that sticks in my am, entire life. I'm still pissed I didn't get to see that. The jukebox and the the crowd fighting noises. I spent... <laughs> Uh, I spent so much time editing those songs together, finding like stem tracks without any vocals, just tr using the instrumentals, mm -hmm. swapping out different instruments from different songs. So you had like the guitar from one song and the bass and the drums from others. A lot of that kind of got lost in the chaos and the bar fighting ambiance. But that's kind of the point, I yeah. guess. But it's also like I did it for me. Yeah. yeah, I like doing that. Another example is during the finale of our game when you guys are fighting 
the big bad. And you guys kill him the first time, and I have just these pre-recorded clips that I play through the surround sound in John's room of his god saying, You're not done. Yeah, rise. Uh, And then, like, the music sting as he gets resurrected as undead Sakatha, and he's got, like, this purple energy and glowing red eyes, and... Then after you beat him the second time and the god chimes in again, he's like, do you think you've won? And it's like all of these crashing sounds of rocks falling and then the warthog run music at the end (laughs) as you guys run out of this collapsing keep. I spent so much time working on that stuff because that's that's what I care about. Uh, Two things. First thing... uh, the sea shanty, when you record <laughs> yeah. yourself like five, ten times. I don't know I how forgot many. about that. And, yeah, and I was about to bring that up. You use different voices, and like you you did it. They were, they were like drunk, so they weren't yeah. singing together sometimes. Yeah, but that was all like, like no, no, no. This did guy, you? this guy, his drunk voice is a little faster than everybody else's, and this one needs a little slower. So it isn't, it didn't like perfectly match up, but like that was the whole point of it. It made it, it feel was, very real. Yeah. yeah. You're also like, that's like playing to your strength, and also playing to things that, like, you're good at outside mm-hmm. of, like, our tabletop game. Mm-hmm. Like, you are our main editor for a reason. It is, you are the one most passionate about it. You are the one who knows the most knowledge of it. And I'll sit there at my desk editing this kind of stuff on my computer and just be like, this is neat. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. When you finish the she shanty, we're like... Fuck yes. <laughs> this is it. Uh, I will see him. Like, I will come home from work on days right before your guys' game, and he will be just <laughs> goblin mode <laughs> in full dark outside with a blanket over him, just working on stuff like this. And I'm like, hi. He's like, working on editing sound stuff. <laughs> I've got something that's, really cool. Uh, Once I'm done, I want, to, I want you to listen to it. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's interesting. So when you first said... The sound of your game. I thought you meant like the unwritten laws of how your world works. Oh, sounds no, no, quite then, literally. But then the you sound. meant literally yeah. sound. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, I also feel like you have you have these rules to make your world the most grounded out of all of us. Uh, I suppose my campaign is very low magic. Mm-hmm. Relatively, it's kind of low fantasy. You guys have you guys have spells and there are magic items and everything, but like they're just normal dudes. Work in a field. The, now that I would say, land. yeah, the other thing, sorry, the other major strength you've got is your world building. There is, there's something so easy to get lost in the world that you have described. Because I got he to He stole see, it from Discworld with Brandon Sanderson. How, how, I was going <laughs> yeah. to say, how well, do you think about it is from Brandon Sanderson? <laughs> well, true. Um, I got to see so much behind the scenes stuff of him actually making the game the world that you guys were going to experience i didn't get to play in it but i got to see so much world building behind the scenes i got to see uh entire like graphs of spell trees and (laughs) i got to see the entire calendar for the weather that he had planned out for what was it two years worth of leather weather question for you kyle make you feel like a piece of shit Uh uh-huh Made me feel like a piece of shit. <laughs> yep. I remember vividly, you guys, it was the siege of Kratos Freehold. Yeah. And Chris, as a druid, is like, I want to know what the weather is tomorrow. Because it was going to be very important to your guys' plans. And I just pull up my Excel sheet, and I'm like, it's going to be drizzly. <laughs> High of 55. It was. And it you was, guys are like, what? <laughs> it was at that time, I was like, so oh. Oh, bitch. <laughs> I got some things I need to work on. <laughs> Maybe that was the beginning. Uh, that was the beginning of the... No. Uh, oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, the second thing I was going to say is that when we inevitably make a film <laughs> together, uh, you're the Foley work. Yeah, sure. I, lo- I love doing little sound effects. I I would just walk around my apartment and just do stuff like... <laughs> <laughs> do you have noise time? If I lived alone, I would... Uh, I would. That just, just remind that right there, there reminds me of Mercer's sound effect for opening a cork bottle. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. If you've yeah. ever seen that? That's that is so amazing. Good, I can't do it. Anymore. And and like like 
Lubash, Lubash can only speak because I have those plastic fangs. Like, he doesn't have a voice outside of that. Mm-hmm. And, like, I guess I also just like props. <laughs> Circling back a little bit to what you were mentioning with, uh, like, having, like, a writer's room, so to speak. Yeah. Of, of people to just bounce shit off of. I think that might just be, it sounds like a pretentious writer thing. I think you like Cody. You like to make stuff because you just like, because you said, I like this. This is neat. You know? Mm-hmm. And you look at it and you're like, I made this. That's cool. I hope they think it's cool. I uh, Deep mm-hmm. down, I wonder if it's that. It's, it's very much, I have to tell myself when I'm doing all this, that all that world building is also just for me. Right. Like, I remember telling John, like, we were in Discord at, like, 1 a.m., and I just joined the call, and I'm like, hey, so I just worked out all the fundamentals of the different uh, magical domains in my world, and how they're interconnected, and how they contribute to what is life. And he was just like, yeah, that's pretty cool, man. (laughs) And, like, I can't expect anything more from him from, from that, but, like... I had fun doing that, but it's also like I can't put this in front of you guys and be like, appreciate my work. Yeah. Well, my immediate thought of you just saying that was, tell me more. <laughs> yeah. How does it intermix? Well, I'm wondering if the reason that you want that is for that pretentious writer reason. Mm. Now, I think this is something that everyone has. I'm not a writer, but I can tell you for fucking free right now that I still think about those little short stories I wrote, and I desperately want people's attention. Mm-hmm. Being like, you did a good job, Scott. That was neat. <laughs> and I, I, I think about it all the time. Like, I think I did do a good job. Though. I think that's a pretty good job. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wonder if that's what you want. I think that's something everybody wants. Uh, they want recognition for that. Absolutely. Right. I, I want to ride someone's coattails to the top. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if I've helped them make their award-winning thing, it's like I made that award-winning hey, thing. Hey, all right. Uh, hey, I'm going to be EP, though, right? I'm going to be EP, though. You'll be one of them. I'll get writer's credit. I uh, want to be the EP. Uh, a songwriter uh, changes one word in some lyricists uh, lyrics and they have songwriting credits. Get fucked. Um, <laughs> Ooh, <okay. laughs> Ooh. So you write songs now? <laughs> one Poetry word. is basically music. Yeah. Um, okay. That's I have this book that rap literally means rhythm and we're poetry. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, yeah, we're gonna cut you off. There. I, I um, can go for a long time about poetry. Please don't, Cody. the 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 Discord moment that you had mm-hmm. was that the same? Because I remember a m- few months ago we also talked about how religion and magic in my world mix. Yeah, and you sent me uh, a diagram that really fit, fits well with. Arcane and druidic, oh, yeah. stuff like that. Well, is it similar to that? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's what we were talking about. Okay, <laughs> it's funny that you bring up that diagram because I was just like, so actually, I wrote up a diagram representing the different the four domains <laughs> of magic, and when you combine all of their different interconnections, it forms a, a a pictogram that appears to be a pair of human lungs, and that's actually. Coincidental, but very important because within the main culture of my world, uh, <laughs> breath is the source of all life. Not the that heart. also feels very Randy Sandy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like that. And I'm like, that's a coincidence, but now it's also integral to why they think that. <laughs> <laughs> because they they have this viviogram. That's what I called it, a viviogram that appears to be two mm-hmm. lungs, and it's like, well, we, the source of all life is your breath. The scary thing is, like, when I'm when I'm writing out my game, and, like, I'll take time to session prep, and then when I hit a spot that I'm like, hmm, I don't like this. This doesn't make sense to me yet. Let's world build this area some. And then, like, I'll stop what I'm doing, I'll go and I'll world build, and then, like, I'll find a puzzle piece. And when that puzzle piece somehow accidentally fits in <laughs> the perfect grooves for the piece to the left and the piece above it, I'm like, son of a oh. bitch. <laughs> uh, it's not... So, yes, I like people to look at my things, and I like them to tell me <laughs> Can that we stop nice. harping on this? <laughs> no, 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 no. The reason I like a collaborative effort and uh, uh, being surrounded by people that are also creating and doing things is because there is nothing more uh, uh, rapturous than 
uh, somebody getting excited about something and telling me about it. Hmm. I genuinely I agree so live, hard. I live for that. I agree so hard. So, like, what one does of the most mean? Good. Okay. <laughs> one of the most, um, one <laughs> of the I most, thought people uh, were dipping. Genuinely, <laughs> one of the most genuinely attractive things that a person can be to me is when they genuinely show, like, passion, like passion about, about mm-hmm. something that they care about. Because I've talked about this before, uh, probably not on the podcast. I made a really sad realization when I was like 18. I was that old. I might have been like 20, where um, I had been homeschooled for several years and I didn't get to finish high school at a high school. I was homeschooled for the last like three years of high school. And so you guys were pretty much the only people I interacted with. And I remember being like 20 years old and being like, man, I got lucky with my friends because all of the other people who were my friends were like non people. They NPCs. were PCs. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then that's what I used to think. And then when I get, when I literally got to 20 years and I'm like, Oh fuck. No, they just, I was much closer to them than they were to me. Mm. And they were just being a NPC at me. They weren't being themselves at me. And so I was thinking, man, I just got really lucky with my friends and they're like people. You guys are like people with personalities and shit. And, and I genuinely was just like, because it, I made that realization and I think it was part of it was because it was just so sad. The alternative was so sad to me. The idea that I thought that I was friends with these people and I was just some guy. Hmm. Um, but I really did think before that realization, I guess just everyone other than a few people in my life are just like nothing. They're just nothing people. Who have no interests or, or personality. Regardless, I, that's what I'm saying. It is so, it's probably why it's so attractive to me, to me when a person is just like into something and like unabashedly into it. They don't care how you feel about the way they feel about it. <laughs> like, I felt my, my like heart flutter a little bit. When Cody went full, like, autism, <laughs> describing how it looks like lungs. <laughs> it, it, it really was. Uh, I'm calling attention to the fact that I'm making a reference to a popular meme <laughs> in culture. It it really, I was, it was like 1230 at night when I was doing this, and it really was the crunk. Oh, yeah, it's all coming together. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> that is really good. Moving on to John. Yep, I think your biggest strength, John. I've always felt this way. Is you're really good at crafting moments, especially like the big one that always comes to mind is that motherfucking lighthouse. God, I still yeah. think about that scene, and I think about what you thought about making that scene, and like I try not to do that because I don't want to uh, sausage sausage being made and all that. I like the moment. Another great moment would be, like, for some reason, one that I constantly think back to is in the Strahd campaign, when the dragon was in the snow bank. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but it wasn't even particularly, like, dramatic, or it was just a dragon fight. I say just a dragon fight, but it was just a dragon fight. But I think about that moment all the time. I wasn't even, my character wasn't even present, I don't think. I think I was fighting a werewolf. (laughs) Um, yeah, I would I would jump in on that, and I I agree. John's ability to a nail pacing to an absolute oh my God, T. Yes. That's that's probably your biggest strength. Um, it's probably my biggest weakness. Um, your ability to tell a story. <laughs> your ability to tell a story in the absolute perfect timing to nail those moments is phenomenal. Every single thing I have sat in with you, John, where you have been telling what, uh, just telling the group what's happening has been perfect. Almost down to the second, every single time. And it is a perfectly crafted image in everyone's heads. So, I love the, so the two of you, uh, John We go very different, very different Uh, ways. Well, here's the thing. Cody is a very auditory person. He, right? That's literally what he was saying. Yeah, for yeah, 30 yeah. Minutes, 30 so minutes like, he was talking about that. Uh, the, <laughs> I know. Uh, so, for example, the uh, that first siege that we were a part of. Mm-hmm. The rocks. Yeah, like, 
the 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 hearing oh, their yeah. trebuchets and go then he off. Kicked the table, oh, and, and we were all like, "Oh shit, yeah. my dice!" Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you guys were all like, "Oh shit, my dice!" I'm like, "The minis!" <laughs> no, not the minis. And it, it, I remember that too. It really was. You guys were just having a conversation with an NPC, and then you just hear the. <laughs> It's, it's, what, what was what's, that? What's, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> and then he shook the tail. Um, so that's very auditory. Gets me right into the moment. John shock value too. Immersion, maybe yeah. is what I'd label it. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're just like a, you like to wield immersion as mm-hmm. like as you were saying. D and D has very few constraints, but you like to take those constraints to their absolute limit and use them as much you can sure. to immerse us. John has decided that. I don't know how he's decided this. Maybe it's my ears aren't so good. So he's like, let's. My what? <laughs> ears my are not so good. Oh, that fits. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> so he's like, I'm going to make this the most visually stunning thing that I can. Right. Because like speaking of the lighthouse, this is what you mentioned. The lighthouse campaign made me realize this. Because you had, campaign session. Yes, I was just about to bring this I, up. I, yeah. I wasn't even there, and I have an image of just this giant underground lake with just pure white light well, spinning around in a tower. He, I wasn't even there. We talk about the ending of it, but go ahead. There was a, another moment. Uh, so he had this um, he had this whole diagram made out of cardboard and string, and it was. You had to stand and look at it in a certain spot, and it was like a map. And he would put his phone light like yeah. like the lighthouse passing yeah. by, and he'd go, oh my god! And the, yeah. and, the sh- and the shadows in this diagram between these two pillars uh, showed us where we couldn't walk through this like chessboard maze. Yeah, it was, and we could only see the path when the lighthouse came around. It was. Fucking bro. <laughs> we don't bring that up enough, but that's exactly what we're talking about. I think, John, you really love your encounters. You really love your minis. You 3D print so much and paint he, so much. He, you love your terrain. His his painting is... uh Him doing the painting is you changing up the audio. Mm-hmm. And it's the same level of immersion into the task. Yeah. Um... I'm, I would I'm, love I'm, to see you guys do a collab. Just, I'm shaking and, and it's like, <laughs> a little bit talking about your guys' yes, passions. Can't, can't tell you how much I love that lighthouse. Even even now, I don't know, a year later, I still think about the end where it's just the three of us sitting on that bridge at the bottom of the lighthouse. Mm-hmm. And it's like the end of the thing where McCready mm-hmm. and Childs are just that like... That's a great thumbnail, too. They're just like, let's just see what happens. Yeah. And I think about that scene and no joke... The the bottom of my stomach falls out, and I get, like, this dread. I do, too, and my character's not even there anymore. Right. I've become a part of the light. <laughs> and Or something. Or something. Who the fuck knows? It it's, is, it's very lynchy to me. Uh, it's, it's, not even, it's not even restricted to those big climactic moments. In the last session we did, we just had an encounter in a hallway, and... We were walking through this hallway, and all of these bad guys were in all these different rooms through doors in this hallway. And people were, like, opening doors and coming out of the hallway, and we were opening doors and going into the rooms. And I'm like, this is cool. This it is felt just like cool. the one from Daredevil. Yeah. It's exactly that. I, yes. I, I loved the moment where... And it's just a hallway. <laughs> where Split acts like... Like, I'm like, oh, I also yes. really care about specifics of the characters. Mm-hmm. Like, I want the characters to feel re- real, so, like... Eric has been, like, kind of talking up this Eric. game. He hasn't even really been talking up a game. He's just been, like, just, like, overflowing with this confidence This in guy slings it. <laughs> and, like, and like you guys go into this hallway, and, like, combat gets ready to start. And Shano gets to kick it off with this dude. But Eric just <coughs> opens a door, and the guy's like, what the hell? It. And he just he closes, closes it behind it. him. And then I'm and like, I just put the paper over top. <laughs> me, me too, though. I want to do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it just screams from behind this door. It was a great moment. It's the... So, like, we we haven't had a lot of this experience, but I've gotten to see behind the curtain a little bit because it's about my people, because I'm the drow character, and the, the drow world that's being built, I am a part of. And so, he has these minis in there, the guys, he has these minis in there that are all these drow... I have so many drow miniatures. <laughs> yeah, that, um, but they're, the thing is, they're, they're separated into groups because 
each of the drow houses have different colors, and so they dress according to their colors. And so they're houses just, of color. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, so they're dressed like the houses of their color. And <laughs> The colors of their houses. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that it's so cool that, that that you would even think about adding that detail for me to see. And currently, I'm the only one who can appreciate it. And mm-hmm. I appreciate it. Uh, you talk about the things that you do for you. Mm-hmm. With my miniatures, uh, I actually tell a very small story in the miniatures themselves. Absolutely. So I was, I was just sucking the dick of Loot Studios bases, right? Mm-hmm. And the giant spider that I've used a couple of different times for you guys to fight. The first time you guys saw it, I mentioned that it was it only had seven legs. And I kept using that miniature, even though you killed it every time. I kept using that miniature because the Zasta's base has a spider leg on it. Mm. So it's like, that is the leg of this spider. Oh, I didn't even realize that. I, yeah, because I remember. He, he told me for some reason, I'm like, do you think anybody will notice? He's like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and... It, it Yeah, it does show the different strengths here, because when I think of encounters, I'm like, ah, the red meeples can be the bad guys, and the blue yeah. ones can be the good guys. Um, I do try to use sound a little bit, uh, and it goes to you talking about really nailing the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I was talking I, who, whoever said Both of us did. Uh, but, like... <laughs> The moment that I can remember right now was in the cab one shot of how he got to where he is right now. And as soon as everything got to its worst spot for cab and uh, Rosie got away, like I started going through this kind of ending of the session uh, piece talking about how he continues to fail and continues to fail. And eventually time is going to catch up with him. And I timed it out perfectly with the song that was playing at the time. That turned into a grandfather clock mm. clicking <laughs> yeah. right at the end. And that was how we ended the session. But like it's it's those it's 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 that moment. It's mm-hmm. seizing the moment. You're such that absolute like I know <laughs> the absolute perfect level of pacing. But yeah, no, I I definitely focus more on a on the physical. And I Oh well, we yeah. know. Oh yeah. <laughs> Kyle's turn. Speaking about physical. Oh <laughs> there were some you have to turn your head and cough. There were some physical specimens of this tournament. <laughs> oh today. my goodness! Just peak athleticism. <laughs> okay, yeah. packing in multiple ways. Yeah. Disgusting creatures. Tall, athletic males and tall, athletic females. Ooh. I think Kyle's biggest strength, and I don't think anybody will disagree with me on this, unless you do. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> okay. uh, I think your biggest strength, for me at least, is. It kind of reminds me of, um, like, pure id, where power fantasy, we talked about this briefly, you you give me the tools, like with Annie, to just be a blithering maniac that punches and grapples and strangles and twists up, right? And obviously Pathfinder allows me to do that, but you're the one being like, yes, here's a playground for you to the, then strangle and beat up and twist up and... and break dance and kill these people right it's kind of like the difference between like you guys would be like an attack on titan kyle would be like a dragon ball z Mm. where it's just sometimes you just want to watch goku scream and then punch this guy so hard (laughs) that like he he, like makes a crazy face and his eyes go bulging right yeah yeah pure id like there you just it just that's what it is for me at least uh where like I said, power fantasy. I get to be this incredibly whatever I want him to be. Like with Webster, he was the stealthiest little one, and he and like he was so he was so little, and he couldn't get nobody could see him. I actually made Deja to have crazy high perception, so I could try to be the only one who did see you. Yeah, but even then, like if you rolled a ten, I had to roll like a nineteen. Yeah. Sometimes I use that against you guys. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um. Because that was you what really, happened with Chris. You really like to... You love the men, Max. And you really like to, like... Do you guys remember the epic? that wa- The epic that was the horse guy on a skeleton... The skeleton horse guy. <laughs> I do remember that, dude. That was a, an ordeal. <laughs> and it was just because you had made this extremely well-crafted NPC, which is to say 
his numbers were so powerful <laughs> and we couldn't hit him and like every time we did hit him it did like half damage because he was a skeleton or something and we just couldn't do shit to him and then like i couldn't make him bleed rough that was a rough encounter and it was a long night i don't even remember what happened i couldn't tell you either uh you probably shot him or something <laughs> that was also the same encounter the same night where you oh, like threw, threw the, the grenade. grenade and closed the door oh man i loved that i remember that was i closed the door you're like you're gonna stand you're going to cover the door? And I'm like, I guess not. <laughs> I was, but maybe that's a bad idea. And it just turns everything to mush. Junkie salsa rules. I, when, when I, when I come to Kyle with a character, right, I feel as though... Uh, this is your come to Kyle moment? <laughs> uh, I feel as though uh, I am unabated. Yeah, you're a yes DM. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, okay. I don't know I don't what know. that was. I said yes. I just, oh, I said the word you said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? I'm tired. <laughs> anyway, um, I feel as though I can, I can just make whatever with you. You, you are a sandbox creator. Um, yeah, that is one of the things I feel like I do is I make a sandbox and just let you guys run. Yeah, that, that's yeah, that's you, what I'm saying. You do give us free reign. You have I, to my own detriment. <laughs> well, actually, uh, I, Chris might have more to say, but I'm chiming in. Yeah, um, go ahead. I think I am not a good player for your DM style. I it, that's very possible because, like, I feel the want and need to balance things. I love adding new mechanics. You need the structure, but I want. I I love the structure. I think. Um, I love making it so that not one person becomes crazy insane, like. Chano, Chano, those blades, man, they're going to get something. They're going to get great. But, like, I don't think they're ever going to be leagues above anybody else. Okay. And, like, <laughs> Thermal? Yeah. I've already got things in the work, and I'm excited for you. Ooh, interesting. But it's never, I don't think it's ever going to push you beyond anybody else. Victoria, you already got Wild Magic. Yep. You're fine. <laughs> Ideally, a rising tide lifts all boats. Right. We all get a little overpowered, but we all do it together. Exactly. Right. And it means we can fight overpowered bad guys. And mm -hmm. I, I do try my best to keep everyone on a similar line. Sometimes I do get a little carried away. I, I will readily admit sometimes there's stuff that gets a little too fun. You guys are talking about your soundscapes and your absolute, you know, you having the perfect moment there. And for me, it, it turns into what is the most interesting mechanical situation I can give my player? I love it when my player can look at just this write-up I've given them, and then I can see the gears turning in their head. <laughs> there was a period where I was talking with Chris about mechanics, and I could we were just on a Discord call, and I heard him go off just into the distance when I started laying out how things should work and giving him some you know concepts to run with. And he just blasted off into the distance, and I was literally <laughs> jumping with joy in the other room. Like, when, with my first character in your game, mm -hmm. I saw everybody, and also, actually, also in Chris's game, when I watched, like, Justin's Barbarian get this crazy big sword, mm -hmm. and Oliver was, like, he was, he wasn't there yet, but he was starting to, he, it was starting to escalate. His, his power was rising exponentially. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, well, like, I don't want to be overpowered. But, like, I want to keep up, so do you think that my robot man could make extra versions of himself? But I just won't play them, you can control them. And, like, because I, I wanted to, I wanted something, but I knew I didn't want to, like, become too big. Mm -hmm. I was, I will always be my own worst enemy about balancing myself. And with my first character in Kyle's game, I was like, uh, we, everybody else is crazy strong. I'm just gonna shoot things, and you know, whatever like happens, a, happens. A guy. And then I got <laughs> pierced through the fucking heart, and I'm like, this is on me. This is on me. I can't blame anybody else. That was... It was I, made, me. I made just a guy. And honestly, like, that was my favorite thing about him, was he was just a guy. That he made him the weird one. He was a helldiver. Okay? He was a helldiver. <laughs> That's exactly what he was. He got thrown, like, he got teleported into this toxic wasteland mine thing going on, with no... Hazard suit or anything. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot that that was the reintroduction yeah. episode for him. Like, we hadn't seen him in ages, and he's like, hey, I'm here. 
And then a giant rat, disgusting bone thing. Yeah. Like, impales him and eats him, and then he blows it up. But luckily, he stole his dad's nuke grenade before he showed up. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it. he was, it's all or nothing, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but then Scott convinced me, like, hey, this, like, the way you play is not the way that Kyle DMs. Right. You need to recognize that, or else you're not going to have fun. You're not going to make it in a world when you're just a guy. Yeah. Because you've got to be more than that <laughs> to make it in your world. Apparently, yeah, I have a problem with boss fights in that regard, where I'm like, I know what would make this, like, challenging, and then I know how to make the numbers work for that. I and will then f- you guys run into it, and you're like, oh, fuck, we ran into a monster. I will stop you at boss fights and say every encounter <laughs> that has a swarm. Oh, yeah. You I- throw numbers. I us. do do that. I will throw it. Our, fun, first, though. our first encounter was like a hundred Skaven? Yeah. That was great for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because he got to kill a, yeah. a shitload Excess of bad guys. Was great. Uh, Webster couldn't do shit. Webster can make one guy bleed. That would, That is... <laughs> I, Asia? I, I, have, I found <laughs> that for challenging stuff, I can make really weak enemies that can't do an enormous amount. As long as they can hit you and do like two damage... If there's dozens of them, we will die. You will. You, it'll feel like a tough fight without me having to do. I all I have to do is remove a few minis when nobody's looking, and the the fight balances out. I don't have to take back the numbers or scale anything down when I can just like turn the faucet off. <laughs> wow. Uh, so I, I think make my people fight a yeti. That's interesting. Uh, your description of me is the opposite of our description of you. Yes. I think that's neat. What was... It's so long ago. Uh, (laughs) uh, 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 Well-oiled, tiny one-shot versus sandbox, Mm. big world. Right. I mean, it also just, like, tracks. You are the... At least the image of you in my head would be that weird, nerdy, autistic loser who plays (laughs) on Halo 3 Forge... Mm-hmm. For hours on end with no one else. Absolutely, I'm in a room, Goldberg. I absolutely yeah, do that kind do. of stuff. Maybe okay. Hold on. You're so in like in a match. League of Legends is is a great example of this. Uh, you're like okay. I have this build that I need to make because I know that they're making this build and the numbers are this now. So if I then switch this item out for this item then my numbers will uh, exceed theirs, and I'll be able to win this match if I can play correctly. I think you should be talking to me. Yeah, that's something. On that one. That's mm-hmm. definitely something John does. I'm terrible with that kind of stuff on that is That is balancing. Yeah. Let's just let's take away League of Legends yeah. and just talk about... To me, that is balancing yourself to be able to handle the encounter. I'm, I'm saying he's um, in Maxer as a DM and a player. Oh, yeah, I do that. Okay. So I that do that a lot. Yeah. I think you used a bad analogy, though. Yeah, I, I agree with that That's one. honestly why I like Pathfinder, is it because it gives me those tools to, where, like, if I want to be a guy who's just, like, really good at that thing, I can be that guy. Mm-hmm. I can be the fucking best at that thing. And that one of the things I end up doing when I'm designing an encounter is I pull that. As yeah. I look, it's, I see something that makes me go, that would be fun to push to its limit. Yeah. And then design an encounter around that thing. Fuck, dude, you guys are so right about the fucking money I, thing. <laughs> I tried to do that, and it ended very badly. I should not try to do that. Yeah? It's a uh-huh. bad thing yeah. for me to do. <laughs> Talk about how two of our party members will, got toasted turn one. I, CR I'm gonna, it's not, 21. No, sh- shut up. <laughs> Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I get to finish it. It's about me. It's mine. Yeah. I own it. Anyway, uh... So you're right. I I should not try to emulate that. No. Because I can't. It's not my wheelhouse. Right. That being said, I now would love to do like a casino heist one shot. I've talked about passion. this a lot. I've talked about <laughs> that's, that's, this. That's, that's what you that's that's what we're looking for. Give Co- us two weeks. Cody and I have talked about this a lot. Well, I've talked at Cody about this where I, I don't know where I would even begin to balance an encounter. Like, mm-hmm. alright, you guys are gonna fight some orcs. And then that's it. I'm like, oh, um, 
There are five of them. That's too many. Uh, <laughs> what what CR should it be? You guys are all level three, but there's five orcs and CR orcs are CR one. Oh, what's the math here? Uh, would there be seven orcs? Would there be seven orcs? Would be I don't know. I, I, what weapon should they have? And like they're like, uh, oh, but what if it, what if it's just boring? I, who cares yeah. about fighting some orcs? Uh, you guys fought, kill them in two turns. I was thinking about how I go about balancing encounters. And I realized I really don't. I come up with an encounter that's cool. Yep. And then I'm like, well, they've always won before. <laughs> <laughs> so I, and I hope they get through this one. I, what, what I really like about encounter design, though, is just taking one aspect of the mechanics and just like cranking it up to 11. So okay. one thing was when you guys were fighting the U1T and you were fighting all the Vatborn U1T, I gave every so often one of them would just have a spell that they could cast all the time. Mm -hmm. And so you had stuff like Flame Guy and Instantaneous Transmission Guy and Mind Guy. Mind Guy and uh the Fantastic Four. Blood Whip? Oh, and Blo Blood, Blood, Blood Man, Man. Blood Man, Man and Ghost Man. And Man Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, the names that we come up with for all, like, I was like, at the end of my campaign, at the end of Curse of Strahd, I was like, I hope we come up with stupid ass names for everybody. Because if I'm the only one who had fucking Burger Meister, Master Mister, <laughs> and Baba Lasagna. <laughs> You're walking right into Baba Lasagna. His name was, her name was Baba Lasaga. Mm -hmm. How am I not? It's harder to say that than Lasagna. <laughs> But I'm like, I'm like, we better come up with dumbass names for people. <laughs> but part of part of getting encounter design right is basically failing a lot until you do find right. out how to do it. Mm. Um, Another thing that find, probably and, and part of it is also finding the bat because it won't work I'm for every say, party. I'll save my my talk for last because I feel like I balance encounters pretty well. You do, yeah. It, it might have skewed your perception of us uh, sometimes. I think you did a great job balancing throughout. Um, we just had a really fucking shit kicker of a party. We, we had did. great team synergy. Mm -hmm. uh, and it I, just kind of accidentally happened. I loved that so much. I know you probably fucking hated it. <laughs> I, I kind of, I loved it because to me, my headcanon was, it was like a Tibble being like, this guy looks pretty good. Yeah. Oh, what, could, would it be okay if I take this guy? Him? And like Tibble is just like a natural... Yeah, these guys will compliment you me. You were like Kaladin mm. picking out Lopin for Bruce He hasn't Lord. gotten there! Um, oh, excuse me. I just finished the first Shallan oh, chapter. Man. Bro? Also, you need to hurry up, dog. Bro! No. <laughs> I'm halfway through the fucking Holy book. Holy shit! I'm like, okay, Chris, Chris will probably be like a third of the way through it. Nah. I think, obviously Scott hasn't done any DMing yet. I always am gonna say yet because he I- did a small amount of world building. I've done a fair of amount of world building between all of you, mm -hmm. yeah, right? Yeah, that's you fair. you are very much a contributor, right? Because I, I make things for you to interact with, right? Um, and I feel like at some point we can eventually browbeat him into doing it. <laughs> it's not gonna happen, probably not. But I think one of Scott's strengths, probably going into this, would be like character design. I think that would be a very interesting thing that Scott would be very good at. Which is not necessarily like player character design or anything of that nature, but when you guys get to interact with an NPC, um, how often do you uh, go about designing what that NPC is going to be like before the players actually see them but start talking to them? Depends. Because in my head I try a lot of different things and end up usually canning half of them when the players start interacting with them and it just turns into oftentimes a caricature of whatever yeah. like initial archetype I, I had gone I can with. tell you like but I feel like Scott would be really good at making really interesting NPCs to interact with. I feel like he's a quality over quantity guy. Hmm. I feel like he could really knock out like a good like I guess over time I could see you populating like a whole fucking town. But like I could see if, if I gave you, like, I was like, hey, can you take the time to describe these 20 people to me? A couple <laughs> months later, you'd be like, there you go. Uh, I, so when when it comes to a NPC, 
that the characters will meet. Uh, I assign them a number zero to ten. That's how hot they are. <laughs> is that for real? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, a, a zero is uh, it, the number is how much work I am going to put into them, right? Random Town Guard is zero. I will come up with that name on the spot when Scott and Nevbly ask for it, that <laughs> asshole. I, interesting. I come up with their names as I'm building the encounter. Uh, a 10 is, I need to know this person's family tree and every event that has happened in their life and how they interact with everything else in the world. The big bad evil guy. He's gonna like be a, a ten. Six. The 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 uh, <laughs> king that sends them on their task, or whatever it may be. And so those are the two extremes. And then all care all all NPCs fall somewhere in that mm-hmm. of absolutely nothing and everything and more. Mm-hmm. I think Scott um, would be best at a mystery. Ooh, I. <laughs> and um, I think um, I think it'd be really cool to do this and i think scott would be the one to implement it which is because of uh, the short story meta uh that we are now currently in for our uh characters backstories um <laughs> oh that's it an would interesting be, thing huh we would be solving a mystery about some big bad evil guy or some organization or whatever in the world and we would find letters or audio clips or something uh soma i think I love that game. Yeah. Um, and we would get bits of the story of whoever in these short story style uh, uh, snippets mm-hmm. that we would find on the adventure. Um, That's so interesting. I don't know why I never got inspired by the audio logs from like Bioshock. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's really for you guys right. to just find something and be like, "What are they talking and then about?" And we hit a button, and we would hear the character's voice, and interesting. And I mean, they have to like piece you were, together. Yeah. You were going for something like that with that lighthouse one shot. Yeah, from the beginning of the lighthouse. <laughs> I think my biggest strength is I can just say things. I can just yeah. say anything. Uh, you, I'm we, good we, at coming up with names. We <laughs> talk about it a lot. You are the best riffer. Yeah. Here, uh, you can I, just make a character yeah. based off of a PlayStation username <laughs> and be that character for thirty minutes, which is exactly what I was getting at. Why did I make you a bird? <laughs> <laughs> I did this, right? I agreed to He's it. He's the only one who could. Uh, but the the thing that really got me, I think, if I ever did a DM, the thing that would get me through it is I like to come up with, like, I l- get little ideas. Kind of like vignettes, like the short story thing, where, and also I just like, I like things that are like, kind of spooky, especially when you start to think about it. Mm -hmm. Like, a great example is Webster. Mm -hmm. So, Webster's whole thing, I, it was kind of the short story meta even back with Webster. I made the short story for him, and it was from his perspective, and I tried to do it in this way that was like, the reader gets these little hints of like, Everything seems on the surface like a little, almost like a kid's book. There's no overt violence being described. There's no overt abuse to these individuals uh, involved in the story being described. But, like, a lot of it's like, huh. I I don't think I did a great job with that. But I wanted to do uh, that in such a way where you were reading, like, you you get to a certain point. And Webster starts talking about how he's hearing, like, him. And you're like, what in the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> and then there's some really wholesome thing where Webster's interacting with his friends. And, like, I liked the juxtaposition of between somebody reading that and then seeing the performance. I say performance. Seeing the gameplay of me as Webster. I was not prepared when you first started doing Webster to understand that flat affect. Yeah. And- I like the idea that the story... Is giving you this like, oh, he's like a he's he's just like a guy, but he, he's like a hopeful hero type, and he he's being told what to do through this voice in his head, and now he's being shipped away from his friends, and they're just telling him to wait for more orders. That's weird. What happened here? And then we get to Webster, and he's this like he is not a functioning being. 
right? <laughs> He's not okay. He is a, and, and like the backstory to the backstory would be, he is a genetically engineered creature that was like perfectly designed to be a untraceable weapon. Like you just send him out like a black widow, basically. Mm. And I, I, I like that little spooky stuff. So maybe in a similar vein, I don't know if I could do a long form campaign, but I think maybe I could do a little vignette. Mm-hmm. Or, I'd be uh, interested. And it's because of Brandy Sandy that that I am so Brando Sando. <laughs> I like that Brandy Sandy is catching on. <laughs> it's you. You did this. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, um, it's because of him that I've talked about this so many times. Oh, I can just like because the interlude chapters. Oh, mm-hmm. I can just like write shit that has nothing to do with shit. Mm-hmm. And I was so proud of myself. I really am still proud of myself for the Stranger short story. I really, yeah. That um, was you should such be. a concerning story to read. And that's what I wanted. Like, I wanted... I like the juxtaposition. It's it's this thing in my head where we get the demon side, and the demon is, like, kind of wacky, and then we get the stranger side, and it's like, this is upsetting. I don't... I don't... It's the kind of... I was trying to go in for the kind of scary that was, like, how the Joker is kind of scary. Yeah. Where he can just kind of do fucking anything the, in a scene. It, it, that... that story you wrote for Stranger really reminded me about one of the last chapters in a book called The Republic of Thieves, which I don't recommend you read because you realize how much I've stolen from that series, too. Uh, But, like, the last chapter reintroduces the villain from the first book, who we thought was just completely out of the picture. And it's the whole epilogue is him regaining his consciousness. And so... Every paragraph is just like a little scene from his life of just these memories reforming where it's just like the boy is six. He feels the current rip his head underneath the water. He can't breathe. The man is 20. He's with his family. They're congratulate congratulating him for, you know, graduating. The boy is seven. Uh, another scene happens. The boy is 25. He's arguing with his mother, you know, and it just keeps going back and forth. It's like it's creepy. And then like. His consciousness re knits, and he's like, "The man is in a room. He is sitting in a bed." It, and then it's like it it uses his name, you know. That just gave me goose pimples. I know. Yeah, yeah. And and that Stranger <laughs> story like reminded me so much right. of it. I feel like that would be something you could be really good at. I'd love to see you write something like that, and maybe play in something that is kind of that psychological. Not to jerk my own dick, <laughs> but I feel okay, like I I. Not so much in a DM sense, but I think my biggest strength. Say no. <laughs> uh, my biggest strength, conversationally, is I think I have a pretty good comedic timing, mm-hmm. and I and it's because of the media I ingest. And um, I've talked about this before. I think horror and comedy go so well together. I think a hundred thousand people have talked about this, especially Jordan Peele. Um, they go so well together because they're basically trying to do the same thing of tricking the audience into falling into the illusion, yeah. so to speak. They're trying to do that subversion of, oh my god, I thought he was dead, but he's still there. He's still walking after me really slowly for some reason. Oh Wait, my god, I thought he was dead, but he was a clown the whole time. I, or, I, don't know. I, I would I would think it's more like, oh, I thought the joke was going this way, and then the punchline is this. Absolutely. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, and that's why you laugh. Everyone, ever, all the normal people have big noses. Twilight, uh, Twilight Zone, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, regardless, I, I, I like that. I like to try and wield that idea. Uh, as, and I try, really tried hard to do that with Stranger's short story, which I'm so proud of. <laughs> I really am proud of. Um. The Shano, the Shano ones were good too. I like, I, I uh, really yeah. didn't, didn't like the second one. Is that the one with the forest guy? Yes. Really not a fan of the second one, because I wanted to make that one spooky, and then I'm like, I don't. I can't. I can't make this spooky. And so basically it's just like a freaking two-page long joke. <laughs> but I was really proud of the third one. Yeah. Hey, I, know, <laughs> I think it's super fun. I know we're a buck twenty into this. Um, but we've kind of, for me and Cody, we only kind of talked about good things. Mm-hmm. So like, what can I do better? See, so I was thinking of, because I, I don't really have changes I want to see. But I do have what I would love to see given your strengths mm-hmm. right 
Okay. I would like to see him actually do some uh, deeming. Mm-hmm. Um, it's talking about Scott. John. Oh, oh okay. Uh, I thought you were like... <laughs> how, with how visual you are, I would... L- I, uh, Shadow of the Colossus. God of War. Oh. I want to... I want... To, oh, fighting a big guy. I want to <laughs> fight on a big guy. He wants a <laughs> giant... Boy, do I got <laughs> one thing for you. <laughs> Just the one. It's not printed yet, though. Okay. <laughs> I, I I think you would do so fucking well with that. Actually, you're going to be the only person who has an idea of what it is. Because oh. I'm sending you something here in like in this next couple days. Ooh. He 3D printed Ooh. like a big... Uh, a, just... It's basically just a real doll of your mom. <laughs> <laughs> have fun climbing all over that. Her tattoo? I haven't painted it How yet. How have you seen mom's <laughs> tattoo, you fuck? Um, oh, have you seen mom's tattoo? It's on her foot. Um, oh. Oh, shit! Fuck! I should have said that! <laughs> uh, We're talking about different tattoos. I'm gonna... <laughs> Anyway, I, I think you would do so well with that. And I would love to, like, ex- just explore the giant thing's body and see, like, here's, like, some, like, cage with a gnome in it. Uh, <laughs> or no, something. Well, guess anything. what? I you got know, news for you. I, I'm just, like, so ready. I got for, three of those little that. fuckers. Here's a cage uh, with a gnome in it. In the middle imagine, of this, like, a purple a celestial worm, bead. But, like, we have a battle grid on um, it. <laughs> Cody, your world building is fantastic. But it's limiting what I think you could do creatively with your auditory medium, right? Okay. Because it, because it takes place... Um, SoundCloud rapper. <laughs> uh, because it takes place in a older Sorry, fantasy rapist. setting, um, you actually get to use a jukebox, though, when we went to the Astral... That, so, that was one I, of the things that I think is, I agree with Chris here. When you guys hit the Astral Sea, you yeah, went you wild went with your sound. There was right? nothing I couldn't do. If if you... If, if we Fucking had clowns. a... Oh, this, uh, just not to again suck my yeah the fucking clowns, the clowns. Um, god the clowns just the ambiance when you were on the sea when it was all the whispers and the echoes and the footsteps I and loved that so much and I had so much fun putting that together the horror of it to to me was that these are this is something my character never would have imagined existed mm-hmm. and that is so eldritch to me even though it's just a fucking clown yeah. Uh, which, in their way, are like the It Clown, which is super weird and eldritch and, and awful. But anyway, um, so like, if if it was like a modern, uh, uh, a modern uh, ghost hunting mystery, let's say, like I could see you doing so much with like a radio, yeah, and oh, like like yeah. spirit yeah. box type shit, um. Uh, fucking Bumblebee comes to mind. Calm. As you are. Um, <laughs> Great. Great. That's the song, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, or like a uh, fucking um, um, Bumblebee, how he mm-hmm. has to talk through the radio. Like, I think you would do so fucking well with that. Just different things and, and just mm-hmm. using sound in, in so many different ways. Well, guess what? I'm going to subvert your expectations <laughs> and not do any of that shit. Hell yeah. This, uh, is, this is the world that Ryan Johnson wanted. <laughs> yeah. What about Kyle? <laughs> I... I thought he was just going to say goodbye, everyone. <laughs> uh, I think I would like to see a... Uh, because we are not high level in Kyle's min max overpower game, so I would just I would like I would like one ex, uh, I would like one experience where uh, it's just I pull out all eleven. The... Everybody's at eleven. We are max characters. I pull out all the stops and, and just and uh, yeah, rocket tag we, you guys. We see how long we can make it through a meat grinder. Uh, okay. I, I think I think that would be a, just a fun experience to have. Um, and I think you would be the one to do that. If I had to give notes, you, we take a long time to set up combat. Mm, sure. You, 
Uh, there's sometimes through Co- that was John Cody. There's sometimes in your game where there was this is I don't know if it was a fault with you or with me. I'm gonna be real. There's sometimes where it just feels like there's something I'm not getting, mm-hmm. and and that's I, I'm like trying to work, and then I hit a wall, and I'm like shit, shit, fuck. I'm the leader. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. We did hit that a couple of times. Yeah. Uh. It, 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 yeah. I I thought about this, and it's me trying to not tell the story that I want you to tell, and just letting you guys be able to make your own decisions about things. Because I have to pull myself, like I said, all that world building, all that extra stuff I do, I do, I have to say I do it for myself, but at the same time, I'm like, ooh, but I really want you guys to see this. <laughs> Hell yeah. And it's like, I did all the work. It'd be such a waste if you didn't see it. So please go through this door. <laughs> um, and yeah, some, so having to balance that urge to not waste all of this time and energy with you guys being able to make your own decisions. Sometimes there's no direction. And Kyle, mm-hmm. uh, the biggest thing, I have no notes for you. You're perfect, Chris. <laughs> I think we harped on you at the beginning. <laughs> uh, Everybody else, we went through their positives. You're like, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kyle, my notes for you is, uh, obviously, structure is good. Yeah. I like the id. Don't get me wrong. I like, but just fundamentally, no one's going to argue that Attack on Titan isn't absolutely devastatingly better than... Dragon Ball Z. As a narrative piece, yes. I agree. Um, I, I, I definitely think that's that being one of said, my failings. That's not even true, what I was about to say. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know that if that's a note that I would give, because I do see that, you know, that method in the game uh, of just, you know, turn it to 11. Like what Chris was saying. Uh, my note for you, what, like what, what I would change, I mean, obviously in person would be great. That's just difficult. Yeah. Um, and outside of that, it feels like there's a lack of vision. Mm-hmm. Um, I can I can agree to that. Yeah. You're relying a lot on us. Mm-hmm. Maybe there are some times where that's not the case. It definitely so- felt like the part where, how is the party going to stay together? Why is the party going to stay together? Felt yeah, heavily on, on the guys. character that I was going to be introducing after my first one died. Right. <clears throat> um, like I've said, uh, and numerous times before, storytelling is definitely not one of my strengths. Uh, so I I agree that is that's something I need to work mm-hmm. on. Um, I think part of my problem is that I have too many ideas for what I'd like to see as a story, contrary to Cody, and I can't pick one. And so I'm trying to mesh all of these different ideas together without putting enough focus on any one of them. The storytelling might actually be based right off the rip. With So your Session Zero preparation stuff mm-hmm. was fantastic. The amount that it gave us of like, hey, this is what I want from you. This is what I want you guys to create. I will give you rewards based on how in-depth you go. It's awesome Mm -hmm. for a narrative story. Right. And then I didn't make a narrative story. Correct. So I think like, I think all that is really good. But you essentially want to take like the smallest bits you can that would allow us to have some sort of. I need to cut out a lot. Collaboration. I really love that survey thing. Yeah, I did. Too. It helped me figure out what kind of character I like. Who my character was. It was also just fun to do it in character. Yeah, <laughs> that was something that you did that nobody else did. I think that's just a big. Oh, you did. I can't remember. It's been yeah. years. One week since you looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just a I'm fundamental sorry. difference between you and I and how we DM. Mm-hmm. Is you want to run an open world sandbox kind of game, and I want to run a more narrative story driven game. Right. No, that's and, definitely true. And I think both of us are trying to pull our games back towards the middle. Uh-huh. And it's it's to a detriment. Yeah, give to fuck our... losers. I have a sandbox world where I put you in one specific spot. <laughs> we're we're like on 
on Space Mountain. Is that what it's called? Yeah, like that. Uh, we're on Space Mountain. We get to see all of Disneyland, but you're on Space Mountain. Yeah. 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 And next, you go to the oh. Star Wars section. <laughs> Kyle, it I'd was love to, jarring huh? uh, because we were playing Kyle's campaign and Cody's campaign at the same time. I can imagine every that other would week. Be very so every jarring. other week, it was jarring. I can see that. Going yeah. back and I forth. Have actually genuinely enjoyed this break of D and D every weekend. Yeah, like D and D every two weeks. I didn't realize how much I wanted my Saturdays. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But now I don't do anything with them. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to just not do anything. That's yeah. a perfectly valid way to spend your time. If you're very busy, it's nice to just do nothing and just stop having to worry about anything. In conclusion, obviously I'm the best DM. Yep. I think we've all discovered that tonight. No think, misses. Uh, not a single one. You have no weaknesses. We all do. Yeah. Name one. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> well, we're not Empathy. letting everyone else talk about everyone else. Oh, do you want to? I don't know. Does does anyone else have critiques on anyone? Hey, we're about, I, I, we're about thirty in. Yeah, yeah. I get. I, I we, cool. you and I gave critiques. We're we're pretty much the non-active one. We don't DM. Yeah, you DM. I the, uh, my before. critique yeah. would be I'd like to see you guys DM more. That would be my critique. Oh, not gonna, I'm not Goodbye, gonna, everybody. I'm gonna end it.